Hey, Vine Community, Jeff back again, and it is time. Yes, of course it is. It's Sunday, right? So it's time for another A to Z in Christian rock. Um, briefly again, Christian rock and metal, not really delving too much into the lighter side of Christian music. Uh, CCM, the pop, the even the classic rock tends to be uh, not included. Just looking at really the hard and heavy stuff, with some exceptions, which in this case is another one like we did before. There is some bands worth notably mentioning. And um, yes, and then we are up to the letter S, and there are a bunch of S's. I think that so far this is probably the most common letter. Now, I'm not even going to try to cover them all because there's way too many. I, If you could see the stack beside me, and I didn't even make it into the S-I's, so there, I, I cut it. I'm like, that's just too many. Um, now, some bands have a lot of releases, so but I still want to try to keep it shorter. So we're breaking this up. At this point, I'm thinking at least two parts. But honestly, I'm not sure. The way that this was building up fast, it may be three parts. But anyway, let's get into it. And let's see. So we're going to start with the first band up. So the first band up that we have in this section is Sacrament. Sacrament is one of the early, uh, this has been early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, uh, you know, pretty thrash and, and stuff. So um, this is their most recent one. Let's put them in order. This is their first album, which is actually more like a demo, and this was recently reissued on vinyl nicely, um, just uh, two years ago, year two ago. So this was the early demo that a lot of us heard back in the day, and then they released their first album, Testimony of Apocalypse, um, just brutal sounding, uh, heavy, heavy metal at that point. Then they changed singers, and they did Haunts of Violence with the new singer. Now, both of these singers from these two albums have reappeared, and we have different, we have Testimony of Apocalypse, which was the original guy's uh, singer getting back with them. Um, and they did an album a year or two ago. Um, and then we've seen uh, Haunts of Violence. We've seen the singer here. Uh, he did some stuff with Motivic a couple years ago, and I believe he's surfaced on some other things. But great stuff from the early days. And then up next is Sacred Warrior, Illinois band. Very much comparison to people compare the singer to like a Queensryche. He's got the high soaring vocals. The band is U.S. power metal, progressive metal back in the day, they'd call it. Um, great stuff. And uh, this is their first album, and this has been reissued on vinyl. Really tough to find on vinyl. I found one a couple years ago. I showed it in a video and literally just sold it about a week or two ago had somebody offer me for it so i'm gonna head and let it go their second album all of these have been reissues none of these are, are og copies um wicked generation so these are all from the late 80s early 90s reissued in the past couple years obsession great stuff great band then they changed singers and came back years later they had the singer from the sacrificed um but then after that i mean he he has i believe left and uh Anyway, they've done some other stuff since then. Great stuff. One of my favorite bands from back in the day. And then up next, we've got Saint. This is the this is an OG copy of their original 1984 EP. Raw, great stuff. You can see that you can barely tell from the picture there. They're covered in studs and leather. So they were always compared to a Judas Priest looking and somewhat sounding band. Um, this is an OG copy, which was later reissued. And you can see the cover's a little more cleaned up there and stuff. Reissued not too long ago. Um, I had OGs of a lot of these, but anyway. Um, time's in. This is the follow-up to that. This is the first full-length album on a different label, Pure Metal, back in the day. Um, absolutely a classic. Too Late for Living was a follow-up to that. Another absolute classic. Then the band kind of, you know, you disappeared for a while. They, they came back in different forms, and then later came back in in the battle which golly jeepers what is this like 20 years ago now so they came back after many years with the original lineup and started redoing um started redoing new stuff and they've been going strong ever since hellblade these are all within like the last 15 20 years desperate night they do have a new singer now which uh, in this era, the broadest the gate era, that you know, there's, there was uh, Josh, this, the original singer, was on some songs and not on some songs, and so they brought in a new vocalist and have been going strong ever since. The calf, and this is their most recent Heaven Fell. 
still going strong, sounding great. Check them out for sure. They still got the same classic metal feel and sound. Okay, and then there were some bands, like I said, these kind of, these are dipping into the, not as hard, but still kind of, you know, uh, still got some meat to them. Sacred Fire. Um, this is a one and done band. It's kind of a commercial Commercial hard rock with metallic edges, and so I saw these guys uh, at Cornerstone in 1987. Anyway, great, great band, great stuff, one and done. Uh, Jimmy Bennett went on to do lots of other music. The vocalist here, he did King James with Robert Sweet and Tim Gaines for a while, and, and other lineups there too. But um, he has continued on various projects here and there. He pops up. So then we got two from Save Your Machine. They have quite a few more albums, but I've only picked up two, uh, the volume one and volume two of Legend. They did three volumes of Legend, and and some of them are even multiple versions, like three, one, three, two um, recordings, and it's all basically a giant uh, rock opera. They're very kind of gothic, kind of doomy, kind of uh, plodding along, but they have this, these albums are based on storylines of a... Uh, you know, a view of the end times, biblical prophecy type stuff. And so they did an entire series on that. So you got volume one, volume two, and I don't believe volume three was ever released or if it was ever actually, was it ever actually completed? But anyway, the band's been kind of silent for a while, but anyway, great stuff. All right, next up is a band that uh, they just had all of their stuff reissued last year. I think I got them and I never, I don't think I recall ever showing them because I got these when I was, uh, down in South Carolina at the end of the year. I got these around Black Friday because they went on sale. But Scattered Few, California, I believe, uh, punkish band. Very much kind of a, the way the singer sings, you know, gives it a punkish flair. And it's just kind of a edgy stuff. So all of their stuff, their, their most popular album to me was Send, uh, Send Disease. Loved this album back in the day. Didn't really follow much of their other stuff. But then, like I say, they recently, and that was reissued on vinyl a handful of years ago. But then just a couple, you know, just last year, I believe, all of this other stuff was reissued. So this is a bunch of demos here. Um, Sin Disease was not reissued. This was already, and this is an issue from a couple years ago. And then what they did is they did the uh, Omega 5 was reissued. And Grandmother's Spaceship was reissued. On vinyl, I see there was a CD box set that I also picked up. Jawbone of an Ass. So these are all their major releases. And then the other uh, Spyglass Blue, which will probably show up in the when I get to the SPs. Same singer type thing, but just a different, uh, slightly different vibe. So there you go. That's Scattered Few. And then another one and done, uh, just a really kind of a hard rocking uh, Scepter Rise to Power. Again, another one that might be, is that really hard enough, Jeff? Well, it kind of is. It's really hard, you know, guitar driven, more of a classic rock type sound. But back in the day, in the 80s, this was just, I loved this album. Thought it was a great album. And so, yeah, it has to be in there. And look, it's a 100% virgin vinyl. So this is an OG copy. I don't, uh, don't know if this is, I don't even know what happened to this band. Don't think they did anything after this. And I don't know of any reissues or anything. So Scepter, Rise to Power. All right, John Schlitt, go. John Schlitt, of course, the lead singer for Petra for the longest time. Prior to that, he was in Head East, if you're familiar with that classic rock band from the 70s. Um, and he's done a lot of solo albums, but this is a handful of years ago. Uh, this was his new one, and it was reissued on vinyl, and I picked it up. So it's going to be, uh, you know, similar to Petra, but maybe a little bit more on the commercial side. He goes into a, you know, just a, a classic -y feel, uh, CCM type feel, but great stuff. John Schlitt, still got to respect him and love him. All right, and here was one that I wasn't thinking I was going to show. Somebody actually mentioned this one that, uh, in the comments last week, and I said I probably won't show them because they do fall more in my world into a not only classic rock, but more of a, uh, they went into a more of a pop feel. But I decided to pull them because just like when I showed Petra and just like when I showed, you know, Res Band and some of those classic bands, here's a band that was breaking it uh before the big heavy metal boom of Striper and bands like that. So these are the early 80s bands that tended to, you know, be on the edge at the time. And that's the band Serban. Now, I am missing one of their albums on vinyl, the uh, Revival, Rock and Roll Revival, I believe is the only one I'm missing on vinyl. Have them all on CD. Um, but they started off as a, you know, just a solid classic rock type band. They have female singers, male singers, and they put out... 
a handful of great albums, Shallow Water. And so they were some of the early 80s bands that were, you know, given that hard rock edge, uh, World of Sand. This was cool because it has the seven inch single. I think I, I had an original copy that they did not have it, and then I found one that did. And then they started going, when they started going like into uh, light maneuvers is when they really became a little more on the keyboard oriented CCM pop side. This is actually, I think, where I discovered them. And I loved this album in the day. And then I went back and discovered their not so poppy stuff. And then Swimming in a Human Ocean. Again, these those two albums were what I cut my teeth on in the early, in the mid 80s. Because by the time I got into this kind of music, that's where they were. So, but yeah, I had to bring them in. That's just one of those bands that, you know, they were pivotal in those early days. Uh, as were a lot of the people on the Toonsmith label, which is the early albums. Um, Toonsmith was one of the cutting labels in Canada that put out quite a bit of edgy Christian rock at the time. All right, and then up next is the band I was actually talking to my wife about today. <laughs> Seventh Angel, uh, late 80s. Early 90s thrashy UK band um, that I really, really dug in the day. Their vocals are just rough enough to be rough and heavy, but not so rough to be, you know, death medley type stuff. And so I really got into them back in the day. They were another one of the pure metal bands. They had two albums out, Lambert, that and Lambert for the Weary. Both of these have been reissued in the past, I don't know now, maybe seven or eight, ten years now. Um, both of these were reissued, and because of kind of the resurgence of it, the band kind of got back together and put out uh, the dust of years all these years later, decades later. Now, Ian, the vocalist from the band, from my understanding, and even at the time of this recording, he no longer claims to be, you know, a, a Christian per se, more of an agnostic. He went on to do uh, a bunch, has done some other stuff, and the reason I m was mentioning him to my wife today was that the um, his new his recent band, My Silent Wake, which has been around for a couple decades now, their new album just dropped this past week. And so I was telling her I was listening to it. I, it was a long story. But anyway, um, so My Silent Wake is his new project that he's been working with for, like I said, a couple decades now. And they just dropped a new album. And I listened to it the other day. And I was like, yes. And then I just happened to say, yeah, they, he used to be in Seventh Angel and stuff. So. Great stuff. It's still kind of uh, a little... They, my Silent Week is all over the place. They're a little doomy, a little deathy at times, a little growly at times, so folk music at times, instrumental stuff, acoustic stuff. Anyway, wild stuff. That's it for that one. <laughs> Another reason why I felt like I had to do The Servant, not only because they're a classic, but uh, and you know because I'm showing another band that's definitely not on the edgier side of hard rock, but I can't get away with out showing the 77s. Absolutely one of my favorite bands. And they are, you know, they started off as kind of a little on the a little quirky, punky side in the beginning. They went into just being, you know, kind of a, a, a rock band. Not so much pop rock as much just uh, straight up, you know, rock and roll with the little pop flair. So anyway, that's their first album, Ping Pong Over the Abyss. And then they've, they've got an extensive catalog since the 80s off on them. And I have most of their stuff on vinyl because a lot of their stuff has been reissued in recent years. This is a recently reissued live album, 88. Sticks and Stones was one of the first early vinyl reissues. One of the first ones I got into when I first got into vinyl. I showed some of these recently in my contest video for the funny and the thread video for their names. Uh, More miserable than you'll ever be. Fun stuff. Drowning with land and sight. Again, they've got a ton of stuff. Pray Naked they is, is the official name of the album, though it's just called the 77s because the label didn't like the name Pray Naked. So they took it off the album and it's just called 77s. And then 2020, which is a live album. All right, up next we've got The Seventh Servant. Um, what is his name? Greeley. He's a guy who sang on a uh, Ice Earth album or two. And anyway, so this is one of his most recent projects, The Tree of Life, Seventh Servant. Uh, so yes, he has, you know, is a believer and has went on to do some Christian music. And this came out a couple years ago, some great stuff. And then the last two I'm going to show for today, we're going to break it off at Shout. And that's uh, the first Shout album and In Your Face, the second. The um, guys from Shout I talked about back in the Jays, um, these two guys, and actually when you go back to this, uh, these three guys were in the band Joshua on the Surrender album. 
So that's when I was talking about how they broke away and went and went on to form Shout. Uh, guitar player here was from Idol Cure, and he did some stuff with them. Anyway, this is Shout, and they did mainly this. This was their first album. They did a second album. They've done some other ones, but these are the only two that are on vinyl. Uh, they did a third album, and then Ken has gone on to do quite a few uh, albums under his name, under the band name Tamplin, under his name. But we'll cover those when we get to them. That's it, though. That's the first half. See, I made it to SH. So I don't know. Between SI and the end, it may be enough to break it into, into two more. But we'll see when we get there. Thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard.